let's say a friend of yours made a change to your repository and pushed the changes to the Git remote. At the same time, you also make a change to the same line of code. When you pull their changes onto your logo, you will notice that there is a conflict. This happens because Git has no idea whether their version is the updated version or your version is the updated version. This is what we call a Git conflict. In this video, you will learn how to resolve a conflict. Now, first of all, let's produce a Git conflict so you see what actually happens. Uh, to produce a Git conflict, uh, we need two sets of code. The first would be someone else pushing onto the remote. In this case, we can go to GitHub and edit the files directly on GitHub to simulate the other person changing the code. Let's say we change the code from Hello world, this is my first GitHub repo to Hello world, this is my second GitHub repo. So we update the readme file. Uh, to be more specific, we say change first to second for this example. So we can clearly see what is happening in the Git history. So we're going to commit the changes directly onto master. At the same time, you open up your code on your local and open up the readme file. This time, instead of saying, hello world, this is my first GitHub re repo, you say, hello world, this is my third GitHub repo. Now, as you can see, first and third are different. Uh, sorry, second and third are different, but we are changing the same line of code. So in this case, a conflict will be produced. We can see the conflict if we go to fork uh, and we commit a message and we try to pull the changes. So let's do the commit in this case. I'm going to change it to third stage, uh, change first to third. All right, I'm going to commit the file as well. Now at this point, we need to check for updates in the origin master so we can do a fetch first. Once the fetch is completed, you can see that origin master is on a different, sort of like a different fork compared to the master branch. This happens because there are some new changes on the Git remote and there are some changes on our local at the same time. If you look at the left, you can see one down, one up at the master branch. It tells us that there is one commit in the Git remote that is ahead of our master, but also at the same time that our master branch has one commit ahead of the remote. So we need to pull the changes onto our local to consolidate the changes. And we do that by clicking on pull. Once you completed the pull, you will see an error message. The error message looks slightly different depending on the Git client you're using. But what it says is you need to fix a conflict before you continue. To see the conflict, you can go back to changes and then you will see a merge conflict has happened. Now, first of all, what is a merge? What happens is when you pull the changes from the remote branch to the local branch, the changes are copied over and then merged onto the local branch. So if there are no conflicts, if there are no, if Git knows which is changed first, which is changed later, and there are no ambiguities, Git performs the merge automatically. So they complete the, uh, so they merge the two sets of codes. But in our case, we have a problem because Git doesn't know whether it should be second or third. So there is a merge conflict. What you need to do to complete the pull process then is to resolve the merge conflict. The easiest way to resolve a merge conflict is to open up the file in your computer. 
if you open up readme.md right now, you may find that the words are quite confusing. Uh, I'm going to walk you through what is happening, so don't worry about it. First of all, when you open up readme.md, you will see a couple of left angle brackets followed by the word head, H-E-A-D. I'm using VS Code right now, so besides head, you will see current change. Then you will see the current commit that you have made that is hello world. This is my third GitHub repo, so the one that we made in our local branch. Then you will see a couple of equal signs. Then you will see another line that says, hello world, this is my second GitHub repo, followed by a couple of right angle brackets and alphanumeric random letters and numbers that signifies the commit hash. The part after the equal signs is the part that is from the Git remote. And these two lines of code, and these two lines of code is conflicting. It can either be the second GitHub repo or it can be the third GitHub repo, but it can't be both at the same time. To fix the change, you choose which is the correct line of code and you delete everything else. So in this case, you'll first have to start with deleting the head because that is not important. Then you delete the right angle brackets and the commit hash because that is not important as well. Then you delete the equal signs because that is not important. Now what we're left with is, is this the third GitHub repo or is this the second GitHub repo? Now let's say the code that you have written is correct and you want to override whatever that the other person has written. So what you do then is to choose the third GitHub repo and you remove the second GitHub repo. Then you save the file. Now, when you head back to fork, the changes will be updated. And in this case, the change is already the same as the one on our local. We don't see any files to be staged. If the change is different, you will see some files that you need to stage. After changing, you need to commit this merge. If you look at the commit message area, you will see that Fork would have auto filled the commit message for you with some description and some message as well. Uh, you don't have to change the commit message usually. So just click on commit to commit the changes. What happens then is the master branch on your local repository would say to up, which means two changes to be pushed up onto the Git remote. If you look at all commits, you can see that the master branch on the remote has been merged back onto the local master branch. What you need to do then is to push the changes up to the Git remote. This is how you solve a Git conflict. Now let's talk about how to prevent conflicts from happening. Conflicts happen usually when two or more people work on the same file at the same time. There are two ways to prevent conflicts from happening. The first way is to reduce the size of your commits. That means for every little thing that you do, you make a commit and you push it. They are free, so just make more commits is fine. And when you end up, when you encounter a conflict that is small, like the one we just went through, it is easy to resolve the conflict on your own. But if the conflict is hundreds of lines long, that will be very hard to resolve. So make more commits and reduce the size of the commits. That's the first practice. The second feature is to use branches. So different people work on the code in different branches, so they don't interact with each other. And you only merge the code into another branch when you are ready to move on. Branches are slightly more advanced, so we will talk about branches and how to use branches in the next video.